JMU's Mark Byington takes the Vandy job. It's Locked On Sunbelt. You are Locked On Sunbelt, your daily podcast on the Sunbelt Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Dave Schultz, Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today, and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Uh, All right, so a lot of shaking up going around the Sunbelt. Not only does Mark Byington, and boy, that was fast. I think it came out before 1.30. Uh, Eastern time, uh, he gets the Vandy job. Uh, we'll get to that. Uh, Dan D'Antoni out in Marshall, and they just hire his assistant, Cornelius Jackson. Interesting. And then we do have a situation going on here, and I'll be honest with you, I'm a bit ignorant when it comes to it. Um, there is a faction of the fans that want wants Bob Marlin out, and I'm not really sure why. All right, They were picked to finish fifth. And they finished fifth fifth this year. Uh, There were issues with the team, but I think that's more about the times than it is with Bob Marlin. And I'm admitted, I'm pro Bob Marlin. They just won the conference tournament, went to the NCAA tournament last year. I don't, it's tough to please some people. Uh, Nonetheless, we'll start with uh, JMU's Mark Byington. All right, so uh, coming off a bad loss uh, to Duke. Uh but having a fantastic season, right? I mean, like UConn and them had the most wins. I think UConn had UConn was the only one that had more wins than JMU heading into that ball game on Sunday. And the rumor was that he was going to West Virginia, and then DeVries got that job. So that was no longer a situation. I I, mean, I talked to somebody that said that he had heard. I, I don't know if it was the same person, but. You know, that was a tweet right before the Sunbelt Conference Tournament that he had a handshake deal going to West Virginia. All right, that didn't happen. So then uh, Dustin May takes the uh, Michigan job instead of Louisville. And for all intents and purposes, it sort of appears, sort of appears, that John Calipari is going to be staying in Kentucky. That could change. He's supposed to meet with the AD uh, later today. Uh, on Tuesday, uh, but that job uh, could be open. I did forget about the Vandy job. Now, when I first thought about this, I thought it was really just a cash grab because he's not going there to win a national championship. You're not winning a national championship at Vandy, right? They haven't been to the NCAA tournament in forever. Well, not in forever, but not under Jerry Stackhouse. And then I started to think, you know, this may be a good spot to have a long, fruitful career. If you can win 20 ball games, and in this year, in this day and age of NIL, and should be able to get some people in Nashville and some Vandy grads to pony up some NIL, that you could go to a tournament or two. You make run to the Sweet 16. And you do that every so often, which is more than never with what Jerry Stackhouse did. You could stick around there. Or... Does he get, you know, think if he takes Vandy to the Sweet 16, does the next, you know, big time school, does he get the Tennessee job when Rick Barnes retires? Say say that happens in five years or something like that, right? That could very well happen. Or he could just stay there and keep on winning and keep on making a lot of money without the pressure of trying to win a national championship. Now, he'll never admit to that. That's, he's going, he'll, whenever he has his press conference, he's going to say, we're here to win championships. We're here to win the SEC championship, and we're here to win the national championship. To build on all those SEC and national championships that Vanderbilt has as a basketball program. They have it as baseball, not so much in basketball. But let's compare that to, you know, the Louisville jobs and the Kentucky job. We can even go back to the Michigan job before Harbaugh got there, and that's football. And it's like an impossible um, status is not the right word. I lost the word. Uh, I lost the word of what I was thinking, but 
expectations. That's it. It's an impossible expectations, right? You have to be, you have to compete against, you have to compete for national championships. Although Michigan's never really done that up until the last few years. And they obviously just won, uh, but you got to beat Ohio state and they had a really tough time trying to find a head coach, right? Harbaugh didn't get the job until after he was done with San Francisco. So they couldn't find anybody, right? College football season's over by that time. So they had a difficult time finding somebody until they finally landed Harbaugh. And obviously it paid off. They did get their national championship. And they had been, I mean, they had been to three playoffs in a row. So he obviously built a juggernaut uh, there. But that doesn't mean it's an easy job. The expectations are tough. Like Louisville. Like they're reporting in Louisville radio that Dustin May was getting death threats to take the job. Like some people did not want him to take the job, uh, which is insane. That's Louisville fans. Uh, so some of these jobs are, you know, they are, they, they, you know, um, they are job that people know what they're getting into when they take jobs like this, right? Like John Shire with Duke knows what's what that's about, right? The, the amount of pressure on John Shire or my guy, Adrian Autry with Cuse, although that's not like Duke, uh, or North Carolina gig, Hubie Davis, Hubert Davis knows that very well, right? It was his, and apparently that was the goal, right? I mean, he was on TV, played basketball, was on TV, was doing a good job with that, but, you know, ended up sitting on the bench with Roy Williams until he got the game. And so the expectations there are, you know, Carolina doesn't have down years. A down year for North Carolina is like the Sweet 16, right? Didn't Dean Smith have all those years in a row going to Sweet 16? It was a big deal. Um, and so uh, some of these jobs like Kentucky and Louisville, the expectations are impossible to meet. That's what I, That was the phrase I was looking for, impossible to meet. So, uh, at Vanderbilt, though, it's not. Vanderbilt is win us 20, 25 games, which is not that hard anymore. And although it may be for Vanderbilt, get us to the tournament, win a game or two. All right. And that's the thing. It, here's the difference between, you know, it's as, as much more difficult as it will be in the SEC to do that. The SEC isn't coming down. To, it shouldn't come down to one weekend for Vandy. Now, maybe it does if you're bad and you got to win the SEC tournament. That is, uh, uh, that's what he's going to try and change, right? Where where his whole season doesn't come down to one weekend. Where I am working on seeding, right? I'm I'm probably an eight or nine seed. Let me see if I can win a couple of games in the SEC tournament and be a number, you know, six seed or seven seed, something along those lines. And then maybe he sticks around. Maybe he, you know, decides he loves it, right? Five years. He's only 47. So five, six years, he's 53. Still pretty young in this coaching uh, capacity. But maybe he sticks around for a, a decade. And he's decided, you know what? I'm here. This is a pretty this is a pretty good game, right? So the Vanderbilt gig, uh, very different from my original thought. That could be a really good gig for Mark Byington. I think Vandy's getting a great coach. We'll see how long he stays. That that could be one where he just decides, maybe, maybe not, that uh, if I could win here, why not just stick around and not get in that rat race where it's a championship or bust, which is ridiculous. Uh, all right, let's take a timeout when we come back. Marshall making a coaching change. We also have some players that went into the uh, transfer portal as well. But Marshall is uh, making a change. We will do that after we come back. Let me tell you about FanDuel and eBay Motors. Previewed both of the ads I have to read. How about that? I'm getting good at this. <laughs> Although I think I did that. Oh, no, I did that right. I did. Uh, say goodbye to Busted Brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the turning. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's $200 to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. 
Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. And eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts that you need at the prices you want, it's easier to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. All right, Dave Schultz, locked on Sunbelt, your team every day. And I tell you, I feel like, knock on wood, I do not get sick very often. I just, I don't eat very well, but I exercise a lot. And uh, I just have something. It's a, it, it's like just a little bit. I just get chills and stuffed up overnight. I've already taken the aspirin for tonight. It's just, it's very odd. I was a little bit dehydrated earlier today. Getting a soda doesn't help with that, but uh, I felt I was a little dehydrated. And yet, it's very strange. Worked out today, we'll work out again. Or worked out yesterday, we'll work out again today. In fact, we're going out uh, first thing in the morning. All right. Uh, nonetheless, uh, all right. A little bit of a surprise because it happened, you know, a month after, you know, the Sunbelt Commerce Tournament. Uh, Dan D'Antoni is out at Marshall, and they're bringing in a former player, uh, Cornelius Jackson. Not bringing it in, just moving him over. He's He was the associate head coach. Uh, as of July 2023, and so Marshall is making a change. They did have a uh, disappointing season. They were 13 and 20 this year. Last season, they had one of the best turnarounds, along with Southern Miss. They had two of the best turnarounds in college basketball history from the previous season, but both of them lost in the first round of the tournament. Right, South Alabama took out Southern Miss, and. Uh, Texas State took out Marshall. So it was a, as great as the regular season were or was, um, they couldn't capitalize on it. And both teams lost early on in the Sunbelt Conference Tournament. Cajuns won the Conference Tournament. So um, they, Marshall is moving on a little bit late with it. I don't, I'm not sure why. Maybe more of a thoughtful process than a knee jerk situation. I mean, we saw both in the men's and women's tournaments this year, Converse tournaments, you know, that these, these coaches were fired right before a press conference. I mean, that's, that's outrageous, right? Dan Munson was told he was getting fired before the conference tournament. And then he won the conference tournament and ended up taking Long Beach state to the NCAAs. And then the AD takes credit for rallying the troops. <laughs> uh, you know, a couple people, um, I think Jared Haas, J Jared Haas, right, from Stanford. Um, he got fired right before a press conference. I mean, there's, there's, there's ways to do it, and then there's ways to do it, and that's not the way to do it. Maybe it was just a more thoughtful process, a little bit longer um, with Marshall. Now, we do know this. Uh, Dan D'Antoni is 76 years old, all right? And, you know, not a big fan of the NIL. Not that he has to do anything with that. He can help it, but he supposedly can't do anything with it right uh and not a big fan of the portal the problem is that everybody else is a big fan of the portal all right players are players are a big fan and teams can get much better quickly with the portal if you're not using the portal to improve your team and you're telling people well we're going to build through high school but then you develop a player and he's ready to bloom as a junior or a senior at, at you know, mid majors, and all of a sudden he's taken off. Well, that's not gonna work. It's just not gonna work. Um, and we had a couple of guys. What Trayvon Spillers from uh, App State and Justin Abson. So those two guys go in there, uh, going to transfer portal. Word is is that Justin Kearns may be moving on. Maybe their actions 
was more of a response to what Dustin Kearns is doing. We'll see if Dustin Kearns is leaving. Rumors are abound in lovely Boone, North Carolina. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. I'd have to figure out where he's going. Um, so, you know, we'll see. I mean, I would presume anybody in the Sun Belt. I don't know where Spillers and Absent think they're going, right? Justin Absent's a really good defensive player, an amazing shot blocker, and I think was the defensive player of the year in the Sun Belt. But, and he's not a prolific scorer. Can be, but he's not. And, and he needs to be careful if he thinks he's going to compete in the SEC and the ACC, right? He's got a huge advantage in the Sun Belt. That advantage is a lot less dramatic when he, when he goes up against, you know, the guys his size. You know, there's not a lot of guys his size or athleticism in the Sun Belt, whereas they're all over the ACC or the SEC or the Big Ten or the Big East. You know, I mean, maybe he can. Maybe he can, you know, find a deal. Go, Maybe he comes off the bench in one of those conferences, but um, we'll see. You know, if you can go get some NIL deal, go get it. But those guys were really good. That's why App State was so good. They had a bunch of these really, really good role players. Not a huge, not a whole lot of superstars, right? Kind of like JMU, that it was going to be somebody else every other night. Uh, so, uh, I mean, Cornelius Jackson, they just kind of moved him over. It wasn't much of a job search. Maybe that's who they had all along uh, for Marshall. But, you know, we'll, we'll see. This is what, I mean, maybe Marshall is like, that's part of the deal. What I was talking about, the Vandy thing, you know, you can't have a bad year anymore especially coming off what was a good season. And so if you go back, so now it's two out of three bad seasons for uh, Dan D'Antoni and, and Marshall just decided they wanted to uh, make a change. And we'll see, we'll see how that goes uh, for Marshall. The, the Sun Belt has gotten very difficult when it comes to basketball, right? Georgia State used to be a power, not so much anymore. You've added JMU, you've added Southern Miss, Marshall had the good year two years ago. The Cajuns are always usually pretty good. You know, Texas State is, you know, a pain in the backside. <laughs> you know, um, uh, Coastal had been good. We'll see. Now that situation is uh, rectified. ODU is bringing back one of their former players, Mike Jones. Uh, so, the, I mean, the Sun Belt's tough when it comes to, you know, there's not that many. That's a win. That's a win. That's a win, especially on the road. Every game on the road is really tough. And so when you do get wins on the road and sometimes surprisingly easy, they are a surprise. They are a surprise. Uh, I guess like when the Cajuns turn things around against Arkansas State, I, I'm not sure Arkansas State was playing as well as they had been, right? But I still didn't see that one coming. And then, then they won like eight in a row. You know? And yet it wasn't good enough. And that is what we will call a segue. What is going on with Bob Marlin? All right, let's uh, do that when we come back. Uh, let me tell you about Nissan and Lafayette Travel. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. The North Carolina Tar Heels can only be described as an armada. The one seed is as hardcore as it gets out there, so no wonder they secured a spot in the Sweet 16 this Thursday against Alabama in the NCAA tournament. They're a favorite picked by many to make a run for the championship. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. And Lafayette Travel. Escape to Lafayette, Louisiana, the happiest city in America, where every visit is uniquely seasoned with unforgettable experiences, savor world-class cuisine, including mouth-watering boudin, savory gumbo, and piping hot crawfish, seasoned to perfection. Experience lively festivals that celebrate Lafayette's one-of-a-kind heritage, explore magnificent trails that lead you through our rich cultural history and breathtaking beauty. Discover the untouched purity of our cypress and tupelo swamps, where you can paddle past nesting birds and sunbathing alligators. Immerse yourself in the vibrant rhythms of Cajun and Zydeco music that can be heard any night of the week. Whether your passion is for our rich cultural history, the bustling culinary scene, or the distinctive blend of Cajun and Zydeco music, 
the happiest city in America has something for everyone. Start planning your adventure at lafayettetravel.com forward slash season. All right, Dave Schultz, Locked On Sun Belt, your team every day. All right. I will freely admit, I really don't know what's going on. I would tell you if I did. I, I'm not trying to protect myself. I really don't know what is going on with the Raging Cajuns basketball program. I am pro Bob Marlin. I think he does a, a pretty good job. He's won at least two Sun Belt championships, right? Both since I've been here, by the way. Is that a me thing? Oh, I wasn't here last year. No, I wasn't there. Oh, okay. <laughs> they won it in 14. And they hadn't won in a while. And then they won it last year, but I, I was just in Mobile. I was just in Pensacola when it happened. I was still in Mobile. Okay, so not a me thing. So, um, unfortunately, Jordan Brown left to go to Memphis. That didn't really work out for guys that are in the portal looking for NIL money. It would have been much better if Jordan Brown stayed in uh, Lafayette would have been better for him. Would have been better for Bob Marlin. Would have been better for the Cajuns. It may have been better for Memphis. It just didn't work out for anybody. Uh, and they had some things. You could watch the game. Like there were times when, I, I don't care, call them out. Themis folks would not make entry passes inside. I don't know why. Uh, Hosanna Katingi was posting up. It's a wide body. Not difficult to get a pass in there. Uh, and he refused to pass it in there. And so there was rumors of selfishness uh, on the team, okay? I, you know, I would presume that happens in a lot of places. We never hear about it, but it is it is what it is, all right? Uh, team got off to a slow start. Schedule was not all that kind. But then, like I said, they turned it around. They did lose to Georgia State at home. In a game, they were not playing well even when they were winning. Like, Georgia, they were up by, like, 10 or 15, and Georgia State was still getting to the bat bucket. Like, they just were not playing in that ball game. Then they lost three or four on the road, uh, and then they lost to Arkansas State, a team they had beaten um, twice in the regular season, and they lost to Arkansas State in the quarterfinals of the Sun Belt Conference Tournament in a game that was not very close. Okay. So, uh, also, famous folks didn't play in the final three games of the regular season. He has entered into the transfer portal, as has Joe Charles. I think Joe Charles may be coming back. We'll see where Joe Charles goes. Uh, but they're, they're j and, and I will say the attendance was awful. The attendance was bad. And I don't know why the attendance was bad. They, you know, when they were losing a bunch in a row, okay, when they lost, coming off the road, losing three out of four, okay. But they had won eight in a row. They brought JMU in. A top 25 team. I don't care if it's a power five, group of five, conference foe. How often does a top 25 team come into the Cajun Dome? Never. Never. Nobody was there. Is that on the Cajun's marketing team? Is that on Bob Marlin? He's never been Mr. Exciting. He's not. He, he's not Mr. Exciting. Never has been. Really low key. Once in a while, yells at the officials. Hardly yells at his players. Um, and so he, we, we know what Bob Marlin is. All right. And there's been a, it hasn't been real all underground. There are people who do not want Bob Marlin here. Someone put out rumors that he was, um, playing footsie with the rice gig, but the fired SMU coach got that job, um, that he hadn't signed his extension. I was told that he did. All right, so take that for what it's worth. Let's just say a very good source, <laughs> a source close to the situation said he signed his extension. He's here. He's not going anywhere. So it does feel like there is a um, battle between the money people and some fans, and Bob is kind of caught in the middle of it. That's the issue, right? The money people like Bob, uh, the fans do not like Bob, and therefore the fans and the money people have gotten into it, all right? Um, and not to take a shot at the baseball team because the baseball team's playing very well, but you want to talk about attendance, no one's showing up for those games either, all right? I, I don't care what they're announcing. Um, we had a 
pretty much gorgeous weekend. And I'll disregard the 11 a.m. start. Like 1 p.m. people don't show up for a 1 p.m. game on Sunday. Forget 11 a.m., all right? Free pass. But Friday was gorgeous. Nobody was there for that. 2 p.m. on Saturday was gorgeous. You know, they're announcing, you know, a combined 35, you know, like 7,000 between the two games. And you'd be lucky if there was 45 to 5. So they are doing, people bought the tickets because they're announcing uh, tickets sold. But for some reason, they're not in. And I don't know why they're not going to the games. And this Raging Cages baseball team couldn't be playing any better than they are. And we've talked about this with the football team as well. So I don't know what is going on. And so um, I was even asked, even asked yesterday, what's going on with Bob Marlin? I'm going, I don't know what's going on with Bob Marlin. He's not going anywhere as far as I know. He is not going anywhere. So as far as I know, all right, those things change, right? Uh, Joe Charles wasn't going anywhere. And now he's in the transfer portal. I still don't think he's going anywhere, but we'll see. Uh, so I, I still can't believe that someone, th- someone DM me today or yesterday as the case may be. And what, what are you hearing about Bob Marlin? I don't, he signed a three-year extension. What do you think is happening? He's not going anywhere. All right. Uh, you gotta be better, right? You need to be competing at the top of the conference. And for a minute or two that, you know, for a few weeks, they were, they, they, they did not finish well, admittedly. Uh, I will say the one thing that needs to change. Every time they lose, it's usually because the other team shoots more free throws. That can't always be the way. Because when you come in there and say all the time, you know, you go the other way and say, well, we're, we do a really good job of getting to the free throw line. Well, one time, one way you're complaining about the officials and the other way you're taking credit for being physical inside. So that we need to stop that excuse. That's the one thing that I know fans get upset about is when the other team you know doesn't get as many foul calls as the Cajuns do that so that's that's a little bit repetitive and so you just you need just to say you know like Mark Byington said usually it's one thing that we have our issue with you know uh rebounds free throws whatever you know three-point shooting and last night it was everything and you just need to just need to say the other team was better right just you know we or we didn't make our free throws, right? If you want a little side, and go, oh, wow, well, look at that, you know, 25 more free throws. You know, a lot of those guys, a lot of times those free throws, right, they're not nearly as, what would you say? Um, the free throw advantage changes at the end because usually the other team is fouled. If it's a close ball game, Right. And all of a sudden, well, they they attempted 15 more free throws. Well, that's because they shot eight in the last minute and a half. <laughs> right. You fouled them. <laughs> you kept on making threes and you kept on following them. So they ended up winning and they took all those more free throws. So uh, it is what it is. Uh, so, again, I don't know anything that's going on with Bob Marlin. I'd be shocked if something does happen. If something is going to happen, it needs to happen fast. Because it's because the portal is open, um, you need to get a staff, and you need to make a change if you're going to do it. I don't think it's you know just like Marshall. Well, Marshall took their time. Uh, now JMU is putting together a whole their whole new staff, um, and we'll see if anything happens in App State. But uh, I, as far as I know, as of right now, I don't think Bob Marlin's going anywhere. That could change. All right. All right. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Also, by the way, I've started the Schultze cast. If you want to subscribe on that as well. So for my Lafayette, Louisiana uh, watchers and subscribers, uh, just go to YouTube. You'll see my lovely face uh, with a good hair day. Um, haircut was, I think that's a picture from like 10 years ago. So it was a little shorter. Uh, please subscribe to that as well. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in to Lockdown Sunbelt, your team every day. We'll be back again tomorrow with another edition of Lockdown Sunbelt, your team every day.